So let's talk about uh, some of the supraventricular arrhythmia, starting with atrial flutter. So we've got an atrial rate of about 250 to 300, a ventricular rate of uh, 100 to uh, 150, and a sawtooth uh, 2-3 uh, in AVF especially. Now, in that, our question, the reason why uh, we don't do a cardiac catheterization, well, you know, we don't do cardiac catheterizations for atrial flutter, right? Um, and uh, we wouldn't cardioverter her again because, you know, she'll be back, okay? So what we have to do is we have to go beyond that. Um, she's failed medical therapy and she's very symptomatic and she's in the recurrent flutter. So in her case, if she's having symptoms like Our Lady despite medications, that's when we have to do a catheter ablation. Now, the good thing about uh, uh, the catheter ablation is that it's very successful, about 95% successful. Okay, now let's talk about the typical type 1 atrial flutter. So what happens in that is there is a counterclockwise circuit running around the right atrium between the inferior vena cava and the tricuspid valve. And it's going around like this about uh, three or four times per second. And so if you are looking from the leg leads, that is 2, 3, and AVF, half the time it's going to be going down toward you. Remember, a positive toward a positive uh, a positive voltage toward a positive electrode causes an upstroke. And then half the time it's going away, so downstroke. So that's why in the inferior leads, you can often see that a sawtooth pattern very, very nicely. Now, treatment is the same as AFib. So acutely, if they're really unstable, you want to cardiovert them. Um, and if they're hemodynamically stable, you can actually do pharmacological cardi uh, cardioversion if you want. Um, typical agents that are used are dofetilide or IV do, uh, ibutilide. Chronically, we can try to control them with beta blockers, DILT, or Vrapmil. But remember, you've got to do the um, uh, anticoagulation as well. 